Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at a very special card. It is the AMD Radeon Pro V7350 by 2 card that is never released. However, Tech Power Up does have the card in their database. So basically this card packs two of the Polaris GPU on one card, which is technically a dual GPU version of the RX 580. It is passively cooled and was designed to be used in the data center. Since this is an engineered sample card, so it does not have any markings on the front or the back. Now it's time to take the card apart and see what's inside. First, let's take out the screws that's holding the shroud of the card. That reveals the heatsink. Yes, it has passive heatsink because it's supposed to be used in a data center on a server rack with adequate airflow. So next, let's take out the heatsink and see what's underneath. It is pretty simple, just like any video cards. All you need is to take out the four screws that's holding the bracket. After taking out the screws, that will release the heatsink. And now as we can see, there are two GPU dice on the card. And immediately, it looks like a Polaris based card to me, just like the RX 480 and the RX 580s. Now let's take out a thermal paste and see if there's any markings on the GPU die itself. And just as you expected, there is nothing printed on the GPU die. So now let's flip the card and take out the back plate. There's a lot of screws that's holding the back plate. I mean honestly, I don't think they need this many screws to hold the back plate in place. But I mean it's a silver card, so it doesn't hurt. After we take out all the screws, that will release the faceplate. It is pretty hard to take out with all those thermal pads. And as we can see, it has two GPUs that's connected with the PLX switching chip and has a very similar layout to the Radeon Pro Dual Polaris. However, I did look up the specs and it turned out that this one actually has a shorter PCB. It has one 6-pin and one 8-pin power connector, along with what looks like three-phase power delivery for the GPU, one for the IOs, and one for the memory chips. Now let's carefully remove the back plate, and yes, it is full of memory chips on the back as well. According to uh, Tech Power Up, this card has a total of 32 gigs of onboard memory. And there's 32 chips of one gigabyte each total. And it has a weird chip that I haven't seen elsewhere before. I think it might be used for debugging purposes. Now let's take a look at the front of the PCB. Um, the PCB looks pretty close to the final product. It does not look very engineering sample-ish. And that's a typical layout AMD would use in that time. And before we could put that into a test, we need to somehow mod the thermal solution because I don't have a proper server to throw this thing in and I'm gonna put a 3D printed fan shroud on it. And it's not the best thermal solution and you should not use it like this for extended period of time but it should be good just for our testings. Okay, now let's boot into Windows and see what this card actually is. So let's open Device Manager first. As you can see here, it's recognized as a Microsoft Base Display Adapter. And let's try to update the driver. Um, since it's never released, then uh, most likely it's not in Windows 10 driver database. So let's use the Auto Detect tool and see if the driver would recognize the card. To my surprise, the whole process is pretty painless. The driver recognized the card right away and install the appropriate driver for it. Now after restart, we're booted back into Windows. In Device Manager, you can see two of the V7350 by two cards, as it's a dual GPU card. Now let's open the control panel. And as you can see, the driver recognizes the card correctly and it has all the same specs as what Tech Power Up states. So this is in fact two of the RX 580 on one single board. 
with more memories, of course. However, what makes it impressive is the TDP. This card only has a rated TDP of 200 watts, and it's packing basically two RX 580s on the same board. However, just a single RX 580 has a TDP of 185 watts. This card did not sacrifice too much on frequency. However, it's running dual RX 580 at just 15 watts more TDP. For comparison today, we're using an NVIDIA Titan C as that is pretty much the last consumer grade dual GPU card NVIDIA has to offer. Here's a quick comparison of the specs. But please note, these are based on completely different architecture and you cannot compare the numbers directly. So now let's run some benchmarks and see how this card holds up to our Titan C. First is the 3D Mark test. As you can see here, the V7350 by 2 is thermal throttling quite a bit because of our um, DIY thermal solution. However, it is still about 20% faster than the Titan Z in 3D Mark Time Spy. Another thing worth noting is since this card is never released, so 3D Mark did not recognize the card correctly. So I contacted 3D Mark support and see if they could add this card in their database. To my surprise, I was able to get a response in just a couple of hours and they updated their system info collector tool and now the card is recognized correctly. Next is our Hitman 2 in 1080p. For some reason, the benchmark tool is not utilizing both of our GPUs. The case is the same for both the Titan Z and the 7350x2. But only with one GPU, our V7350x2 is still able to achieve almost double the frames per second compared to the Titan Z. Next is Metro. We're running this benchmark in 1080p Ultra. This time, technically, the V7350x2 is about 50% faster than the Titan Z. But in my opinion, it doesn't really matter, since I don't consider either of them playable. Next is our Compute Benchmark. We're only running OpenCL here, as the rating pro does not support CUDA for obvious reasons. So the V7350x2 achieves almost double the score of the Titan Z. However, just for reference purposes, I've included a GTX 1080 here. As you can see, a 1080 is still about 20% faster than a V7350x2. Which is kind of awkward considering the V7350x2 is supposed to be a pro card that's designed more for professional and compute purposes. But could it be a driver issue? Or could it be the Geekbench is not utilizing both of our GPUs? We're about to find out in part 2 of this video, so please subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Okay, that's it for the first part of the video. Thanks for watching.